we are going to start. Um, there's always more people joining. They can join later, but also out of respect for those who have uh, joined us on time. I don't want to delay it and take more of, of your time. Buying a property in Spain. Uh, Spain is a, a fantastic place to buy a property as an international buyer. Some of you, I know they you live here already, other don't live here. Maybe you think of buying a second residence or, or live here in the future. Uh, I don't know many people who regret having bought a property in Spain, whether it's for the lifestyle, the climate, the low cost of living, uh, the connectivity in Europe, what it might be for you. Uh, there's many good reasons to buy. Now, that buying process should be a, a pleasant, a smooth, an exciting journey. It's a, it's a very big decision for, for many people financially, the biggest decision in at this stage in their life, probably. But it's also true that many international buyers, they, uh, they, they regret the purchase afterwards. They make mistakes. They lose money. They, they end up in legal battles. And, and that's what we need to avoid, of course. Um, so who am I? For those who don't know me, Raf Jacobs, I created Inspire Property Experts years ago. Uh, we do, kind of speaking, two things. We help people in a, in, in a one-to-one, in a, in a very personalized matter, manner um, in their buying journey. Uh, and secondly, we offer as well, and that's new, an online mentoring program for, for people who, who are not uh, necessarily willing this one-to-one -one support, but are more interested in, I want to learn everything. I want to tap in in Inspire's knowledge and expertise, but you want to do things um, in a do-it-yourself yourself mode, which is absolutely fine, of course. We invest in real estate as well. So everything we, we explain comes from day-to-day -day experience, also with our own money. Uh, with a leading buying age, agent uh, and advisor for international uh, buyers. And bottom line is I, I, I spent my whole professional life working in, uh, uh, in, in the services industry, always working with buyers, not in property in the beginning. I worked for American companies for many, many years. Accenture was the last one. It's all about buyers. At some point, I re corporate buyers, at some point I realized that when people buy property, they don't apply best practices. They don't try to mitigate risk. They don't negotiate the best deals. They don't have a plan B. Uh, they take decisions too quickly, all these kind of things. So that's why we created Inspire. It's a pretty large YouTube channel that we, that we manage, uh, over 300,000 viewers. Feel free to check that out uh, at some point. Um, and because we have an independent opinion and, and I can say what I think, and that, that's a luxury, because we don't sell property, this allows me. Uh, th th this this uh, generated two two. Uh, I'm going to turn on off the sound here. I think. You, can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, the City Council of Barcelona assigned me as the go-to expert for property matters for the international community. That's because we have an independent view. The same with the University of Barcelona. I teach their real estate, and as you can see, uh, or you might have seen, I'm pretty frequently consulted in the media. Last article was in the New York Times, the small regional New York magazine, I believe, or newspaper. Uh, no, all these all, all these things you see. Idealista is the largest property site in Spain, Metropolitan, the largest uh, international uh, magazine for Barcelona, Trends, the largest financial uh, magazine in Belgium, and so on. So that's a bit what we do. The duration of today's webinar is an hour. If there's questions at the end, if you are very active, a lot of questions, I can keep going. But we will try and do it within within the hour because some people will uh, will have to leave. It will be recorded. If you if you have to leave earlier, let us know. We will send you a uh, a recording. In this session, what I want to try and achieve, my goal is that you will that you will learn three important things. One is I'll give you very specific examples. Uh, on how you can save money, how you can save thousands of euros in your purchase process with your purchase decisions. I'll explain you how Michael, an American buyer who wanted a golden visa and just bought uh, three, four weeks ago um, in Barcelona, how we how we saved 55,000 euros in, in the negotiation process, but also how we avoided massive legal issues. And I'll give you examples of what these issues were, how you can spot them and, and how you can prevent them because they would have led to to, to instead of a, a dream to a, to a nightmare. I'll explain you how Janin uh, saved 50,000 euros in the purchase process just by postponing 
the the note tree, the purchase deed by two weeks and taking a smart decision. Um, so that's examples of, of, of how you can do, do better things. Secondly, I also want to make sure that you gain clarity and uh, confidence uh, to start your journey or to continue your journey. That will, that will help you avoid mistakes, help you take better decisions. And the third point is that the information I will share today, you'd be able as well to plan your journey better and decide if uh, uh, or, or how you want to approach this. Because there is some things that I'm sure you are very good at and maybe you see a lot of properties and maybe you realize today that for some points you will need expertise maybe legal, maybe technical inspections, whatever it might be. Uh, this Q&A at the end, so uh, take take pen and paper um, and we, we, we take time for that, for your questions at the end of the session. For who is this session intended? Uh, just to make sure you're, the, you're in the right place. People who are today uh, thinking about buying in the maybe medium term, so people who want to learn, they want to absorb as much knowledge as possible about how it works and how it doesn't work in Spain. So you're at the right place. Uh, take your notes and ask your questions. Secondly, for people who are already actively in their buying process, that's people who, who are probably already visiting some properties. Uh, maybe you see a property or one or two and you, 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 you think you might wanna buy that. Uh, that's another type of, uh, I think, uh, target group for, for today, because you will learn uh, a lot of things that you can use before you actually make that commitment, that decision, before you put a signature on an offer or on a reservation contract for a certain property. The market in Spain is uh, booming, the property market. Uh, this, is, this is quickly, I can't go into detail in every topic in this webinar, and it's also not the, the purpose. There's a lot of content on, on our YouTube channel, on, on, deep dives on different topics, yeah, but yeah. last year with the maximum number of, of transactions in Spain. You see the graph in the last decade roughly um, increasing. Overall transactions from that, that means across all of Spain, all residential properties, but also the international buyer segment, which is most of you are, if not all, are international people living here or not living here. Um, there was nearly 90,000 international buyers last year. That's an historic peak. Never, ever so many international buyers, even not before the, the 2008 uh, uh, market crash. That's about 340 international buyers every single day. So when you make your coffee or your tea in the morning, that day, there's going to be 340 people signing uh, a purchase deed at a notary in Spain, making their dream come true, uh, locking in their investment. The fact that the market is, is moving, that there is so much demand, uh, hasn't gone unseen or unnoticed by, by the media. Actually, I've been interviewed by several media, but for instance, the New York Times, there was an article a week or two ago, uh, specifically about Americans uh, flocking to Europe. Uh, El Español, one of the largest online Spanish magazines as well, uh, or newspapers as well. Many of our customers are mentioned in the New York Times and El Español. Take a look. It's interesting to read. It's a story behind people that, that you can find there. Uh, we can share the link in a follow-up email if you want to. Um, you'll do that. It's a story behind people. It's not about how the market is going. It's not what I'm covering here. It's not, no duplication in, um, in them. And actually, if you zoom in and you look just at the American buyer segment, you see that that increase is, is it's brutal. There's, uh, in, since 2019, the number of American buyers in Spain have, has doubled. And that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty important to, to be aware of. We think there is still room in the market for further growth. The demand is very strong. Overall, the property market will cool down a bit in Spain because interest rates are, are, are higher, that makes it more expensive for some people to eat some of their, their buying power. Um, but, uh, and, and that's one, the first piece of, uh, I think, advice for you. Everything you read in the newspapers, on the internet, uh, about the property market, if there's data involved, be mindful that that's typically average data for Spain. And average data for Spain is not relevant for what you want to buy. Because Spain is very, very large, geographically speaking, very diverse in terms of 
uh, larger cities, Madrid, Barcelona, for instance, and the coast or inland. You can't compare these property markets. You have local buyers, you have international buyers, totally different budgets and expectations. Don't uh, don't don't uh, get hung up too much on on numbers you read in the in the news. So uh, it's going to be very good year this year for cash buyers specifically because the interest rates are up. Um, but we see now today uh, people who don't need a big mortgage, they have a, a, a massive advantage uh, in the negotiation or to compete with other with other buyers who might need a mortgage. Uh, there is a, a lot of the things you read in the news will be positive news about the property market. Uh, again, we don't sell properties. People who sell property will never want a negative message to go into the media because then they're worried that that demand might drop, that buyers might might postpone their purchase. What I hear in my daily conversations in our network with lawyers, with notaries, with uh, agencies, because we need agencies to when when we buy properties for our clients, they are worried. Many agencies are very worried about the drop in transactions because of the uncertainty, because of the higher interest rates um, in Spain, not globally in many parts, but in Spain. That's general. International buyers, I think it's going to be a very different segment with very strong opportunities for you, for certainly for those who have good amount of savings and and can can get a mortgage or do or do not need a mortgage. So, and that's a segment we we are specialized in. The, the international buyer segment. Uh, Ninety nine percent of our clients are are international. In in such a market, in a, in a market with. Um, with agencies worried about about their transactions and their their fees, therefore, in in a market uh, where properties sell very quickly, uh, expert advice might be more important than than, than before when, when the market was maybe a bit more stable. So this webinar uh, must know things for you to save money, to gain clarity, uh, to gain confidence. That's my goal. Uh, and the the agenda points just for. I will start with a few must know things about how things do not work in Spain. And those of you who, who I would call expats who are living in Spain at the moment already, uh, you will know that some things in Spain don't work as they do in your home country. Uh, it's the same with property. The problem is with property, there's a lot of money involved from your side, a lot of commitment, like maybe a mortgage, uh, there's contracts involved. So the, the risk is, significant here You've got to be careful i will explain you what works i will talk about the myth of the spanish lawyer we talk about requirements for buying uh things that you have to do things that we think you should do not necessary but you should do uh, talk about golden visa because uh, there's chinese american buyers uh, like golden visa a lot i'll explain you what it is and and and, and how it works there is maybe some changes coming up in the golden visa scheme so this is accelerating some buyers uh, that's for non-EU buyers, yeah, buyers out of Europe. Um, talk about the steps in the buying process, locations, and I added locations because mm, many international buyers who don't live in Spain, they, they often tell me in the first conversation, yeah, we think uh, probably Costa del Sol or, or the Costa Brava or Mallorca or Barcelona. But <laughs> that's a good starting point, but that's, that's a very, very early stage uh, description of, of, of what you want to buy. Because these areas are a thousand kilometers from each other, are very different, price-wise different, lifestyle-wise very different, etc. So, before we start, and this helps me to, we will launch a poll on the screen now. Describe yourself. You can just select all the options that apply to you. Helps me to understand who's in the session today. Helps me to pick the right examples. I could be speaking for hours here, but what we need to do is make sure it's as relevant as possible. So. Just go through the list, please, and um, Mark. You need to scroll down as well in this list, I think. Yeah, I see people are doing this. So we're gonna leave this poll up here for a little bit. Uh, so what do I see here? I'll explain you the, I'll explain you the results huh, in a second. I see a lot of people are, majority wants to buy to live for themselves so far. A large part as well, second residence with the potential to rent it out, few people for investments. Um, around half of you want to take a mortgage. Results are still coming in, are still changing, but uh, 
for most people on the call, it's going to be their first purchase in Spain. We have customers that buy that third or their fourth property and uh, they still don't trust how the market works here and they are right. Uh, okay. So mo most people participated here. We will, uh, so most people want to buy to lift themselves. Half of, half of you is, two out of you want to live. Half of, half of you says you're thinking of a second residence. So some people maybe have still both options in mind. Uh, some people want one out of five, one of your investments. It's good as well. Half of you want a mortgage. And for the majority, it's the first time purchase. And also half of you didn't visit any properties yet, which is very interesting for me because I will give you some good examples to, to, um, that will help you in that when you, when you make these first visits, you're gonna close this poll. Um, and then there's one more question to start. And this is, cause I will, I'm not gonna just explain you everything that you should know. I'm gonna also try and make you think about uh, a few questions. Uh, not many questions, don't worry, it's one now. Can, can, can we get the next poll up? And, that will help you also to realize how much you know about so a few fundamental things. The question is very simple. When you find a property, typically you find properties online, you click on the link, you typically get in touch with a agency, agencia in Spanish, that is basically the agency who commercializes the property. Yeah? Uh, they, they will help you to explain you everything, etc. Who is the client of that, of that agency? in Spain, is it the buyer, is it the seller, is it both of you, so do they, do they intermediate and, and, and uh, or are you not sure? It's a very interesting question. Okay. Good, so we're gonna, pretty good, we good audience here. I think we can, um, we can, we can close it, I think. Uh, 70% of you said that the seller is the, is the, uh, is the client, but also 20%, 20% meaning, uh, that's, a, that's, that's a too big group. 20% is saying that the buyer or both the buyer and the seller are the clients of the, of the agency. Okay. Can we close it on the, on the screen? Now, it's better than in the past. We had, we, I keep repeating this poll over and over again. And I, I, it's still on my screen here. Can we get it off? And um, the only right answer is that, sorry, the only right answer is the uh, seller is the client of the agency. The agency works exclusively for the seller in Spain. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this poll off my screen. It's still it's still bothering me here. Makes it a bit apologies for this. Well we can see the pie chart. How can I get this? Uh... I don't see my screen. This has major implications because many people walk into or get into a conversation with an agency thinking that the agency is representing them and that is not the case. Uh, that leads to trusting often the wrong person or individuals or, or, or company. It leads to signing documents you might not have to sign and all the consequences that this, this might have. So this brings me to the next point, which is uh, what are the fundamentals that you really need to know uh, about the property markets in Spain? One. Give me one second, please, because I, I, I need to sort out something with my screen. I have an issue here with this um, poll. Yeah. 
three loops. So, okay. Sorry. A few things you really need to know. I'll look a bit more at my papers here. Anyone can sell properties in Spain. There is no or nearly no requirement or license required to sell properties. Big problem. In many countries of the world, you need a license, you need training. There's uh, ethical ways of working, codes of contact. It's not the case in Spain. In Spain, actually, nobody knows how many real estate agencies there are because there is no official registry required. In some parts, it is required, but even there, Second point, liability is a joke. An agent does not have to give you all information about the property. If there is something wrong, they don't have to tell you in Spain. You have to find out yourself. If you don't ask, they might not tell you. Uh, but if you sign a contract to buy the property, the, the problem, the responsibility becomes your responsibility. They're not liable. Now you say, yeah, but in, in other countries, in France, for instance, or in many parts of the world, the notary has a role to check the the, the the transaction the notary has a responsibility there or there is uh title insurance in the us and or, or data is just public it's not a case in spain the notary is not involved you only see a notary the last one hour of a, of a six or three or six month journey data is not available but you need to take quick decisions that's a conflict because when you see a property and you think it's good you need to take a decision same the next day if you really want it uh, and unfortunately, many bad properties are often presented as bargains to uh, drag people into something that looks attractive, but is actually rather a, a problem. The fact that the market works like this is reflected in how our buyers, uh, uh, or, or how uh, where their concerns are. This is, I, I took the last 100 um, surveys from our international buyers. I split them between American buyers and other internationals because there's a lot of Americans on the on in the, in the group here. Um, you see here, everybody's worried to pay too much. It's logic, but it, 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 it's the two, more than two out of three people have that concern. Second major concern, making mistakes in that process. And that's typically mistakes with contracts they mention, legal things they don't know, certain steps they might not know and they, they, they're worried really to make mistakes um, mistakes with. Uh, the, the, these things happen way too often. And the fact that they're worried about this is because they've probably read somewhere that these things can happen in Spain. Uh -huh. Or people buy the wrong property, third major concern. It's, it's, uh, you, you may visit five or 10 properties, you like one or you like two, you decide to buy one, but is that the right one? Is that the right location? Is that technically okay, that property? Uh, what about the neighbors? What about the ur urban planning? Is there any affectation? Uh, what about maybe depth on the property? So that's concerns we see reflected. You might recognize some of these yourself. There's a lot of content on our YouTube channel that, that addresses some of these topics um, specifically. So you might say, fine, uh, I know the market is not regulated. It's poorly, poorly, poorly regulated. I know there's risk I'm exposed as a buyer. I, I have some of these concerns, so I'll take a lawyer because I read somewhere I need to take a lawyer uh, and then I'll be fine. So here's the next question for you. For which, there's another poll popping up. For which of the following topics is your lawyer or would your lawyer actually be responsible? It's a longer list, but think about this and just tick those uh, topics that you think your lawyer is responsible for. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to do this. Yeah, I see people are, are answering now. Okay. Uh, good. Take, keep going to the list and mark the ones that you think are responsibility of your lawyer. So when you hire a lawyer, 
that you know or what you think he's or she's responsible for. Actually, and before we close the poll here and before we talk about the results, um, a lot of people say, I know I need a lawyer. And when they visit properties, they, they deal with agencies and the agency, agency says, a seller agency who, who shows you the property. Says, if you don't have a lawyer, we've got three. Uh, we've got three good lawyers that work with us. We can give you the contacts if you want to, and you can talk to them. Th think about that. The agency represents the seller, is paid by the seller. The agency recommends you three lawyers. Whose interests are these lawyers going to defend? And then the buyer says, no, but it's a cheap lawyer. Of course, they get money from somewhere else. It's not from you. They get a little bit from you and a big chunk of money from the seller. So be very careful. Never, ever take advice from an agency who presents your counterpart in terms of who you should work with as a lawyer. Let's look at the questions here. So we see, uh, I, go, I go top through bottom. Uh, I will enter poll, and I think I can share the results on the screen. You see them on the screen? So the feasibility of your, of your uh, project, of your dream, that's not what a lawyer needs to do. Yeah? The feasibility for me is, is what we do is like, with your budget and with your lifestyle and with your dreams, what can you buy where for a certain amount of money? And how do you get, get the best value for money? From a lawyer does. Uh, then finding properties, no, of course not. Um, checking if there's encumbrances on the property, yes. Uh, interesting enough, only 60% of the people think that that is a role of the lawyer. It's one of the main jobs of the lawyer, making sure that the, the, the property is without, is, is free of charges. That is, I'll give you examples now. Uh, it's of course not going to visit properties with you. It's not going to benchmark. It's not going to negotiate. Uh, it's not, well, many people think, well, some people think that the property is long-term value. The lawyer doesn't care. Right? The lawyer is there to check the property, the title, the ownership, make sure it's, that it's, it's free of charges, to review the purchase contract and go with you to the notary. That's basically the responsibility of the lawyer. Everything else, the mortgage, the lawyer will not do that. Huh? Technical inspection, the lawyer will not do that. Is your property good on the rental market or not? Because it's partial investment. The lawyer will not do that. So I've asked this question with the, with the idea to stimulate your thinking and realize that there's a lot of things that a lawyer is not responsible for. Okay? We, can, we can close the poll now. Um, there we go. So, sorry, yeah. So the, the real problem behind this is, so you, you, you realize there is some challenge in the market, but basically it's the, uh, the agencies who love international buyers. They know there's more money available very often. Uh, they know you don't know certain things. That's one thing. Uh, the reality, the second problem is, part of the problem is the poor regulation. So there's no framework that protects you. There's no liability for other parties. And it's very hard for many buyers to know everything about buying and to know the right people in the process. Because if there's one thing that they don't believe in, is that one person can do everything. I can't, I can't do everything in a purchase pro uh, process. That's why you have inspired property experts. <laughs> we need, I believe, in specialization and expertise. Yeah? Not a generalist lawyer, a specialist lawyer for the buying process. A specialist, another lawyer for, let's say, golden visa another specialist architect for uh, inspection and so on. So that's our view on, um, on how you work. That is, that is the, the, the real problem we see. Move on. Examples, because I, I promise you to, to, to tangibilize this as much as I can. Example of what can happen and things you should watch out for, situations you should spot. Michael, uh, I mentioned uh, American is moving to Barcelona, wants golden visa here. Um, uh, the agency, the seller, and it's not a small agency, the agency did not mention, they say they didn't know, I don't know, but they did not mention a major legal issue with the property. What was the major legal issue? So Michael liked the property. We went to see it with him. We thought it was a good property. We managed to have a very strong negotiation with the, with the selling party. There were some, some strong arguments we built up. We got the price down by 50,000 euros. 
And then the agency was pushing to get a signature from Michael, all the documents, uh, an arras contract in Spanish, which, which means in English, it's an earnest money contract. You pay 10% to the seller. You're really committed. If you don't buy, you lose your money. They were pushing for that signature because that's when agencies get their commission from the seller. Okay. So we pushed back because our lawyer said, wait a minute. In the, land registry, in the land registry, we see that someone else has a preferential right of purchase on that same property that the agency is trying to get to sell to Michael. And we confront the agency with that situation, official document, and they say, what, what, what are you talk about? What, what do you mean? So they were either not aware of, or they did a very good job in hiding it. Mm -hmm. The owner, because then we talked to the owner, wasn't aware of it. And I, and I think that might be true because it was nothing that was linked to, to from when he bought the property, it was an, an, an inherited uh, charge on the property uh, restriction. But it means that if Michael would have done what the agency said, if you would have paid 10% uh, to, the, to the sellers, and then a few weeks later, having paid the full amount, more than half a million euros for the property, if the other person shows up and says, I want to buy this property because I want to execute my preferential right of purchase, they can buy at the same price as you bought before you. And you start off for one and a half to two years of legal battles with lawyers, with, with, with problems, with, with agencies who don't want to be in that situation. So that's things you got to spot. Before you buy, ask and extract from the land registry to the seller if you don't have somebody who's doing this for you. And it's very, very important. There you can spot such, such uh, charges. It's not spotting it. You also need to interpret what they mean exactly. Because sometimes there's like two pages of, of charges and, and restrictions on the property. Sometimes they're important, sometimes not. Second example, Janet, Janice. Uh, Costa Brava, so north from Barcelona, bought a wonderful house, a very, very, very nice house. Um, she had a mortgage offer signed. So a binding offer signed between the bank and herself uh, for, for the house they wanted to buy. And then through a, a very strong broker, mortgage broker we work with, uh, we also different brokers depending on the situation. And we said, Dennis, I think for your situation, talk to this broker. He might be able to get you a better deal. The broker uh, got an offer which saved them 50,000 euro of interest payments over the duration of the mortgage. It was 22 years, I think. 50,000 euros of interest payments. So every month you pay hundreds and hundreds of euros less for, this, for the same property at the same price, just a better banking offer. That's a network they didn't have. Uh, so you've got to compare banks. We can put you in touch with brokers. There's, there's no problem in doing that. We don't charge for that uh, as, as part of our work. This is because it's, this is critical. If you don't have a good uh, mortgage deal, if you don't have the best deal, your your whole purchase is suboptimal and it's not, we, we don't like that. Last example, Bill and Morgan, lifestyle buyers from the US, bought in Barcelona, but the property needed a lot of renovation. It was beautiful, it was okay, but they wanted to make it nicer, but they were moving back to California. So what happened, we got to, put a team in place to manage that renovation, that network, we could do that. But also in this case as well, the selling party. So there was, it was clearly documented in, in, in not just in one place, clearly documented in the building on the first floor, there was uh, two apartments from the same owner. They, they were doing an illegal activity without the proper licensing. Yeah? Was not mentioned. That's information you should know as a buyer. So we could act talk to the city council, these things are, are clarified now, uh, but that's things that can pop up and they won't tell you. Okay, that were examples. Now, uh, before I, I dive into the into the detail, in the, in the, in the next level of detail, um, you, you've, you understood already a bit that, that we help people across across different areas. Basically, it's it's, it's very simple. Uh, there's two areas how we, how we help buyers, and I'm not gonna go into detail, I'm just gonna give you the highlights. Uh, one type of buyers, they like to, the, one-to-one -one advice, a very personalized way of helping you, meaning we help you plan for your purchase. We help you talk to banks or brokers. We we can pre-screen the market, pre-filter or, or pre-select properties, make a short list. We go and visit them before you even see them. If you don't live in Spain, you, you, you need somebody to take a look at it. Otherwise, you come here for two weeks and it's, it's very inefficient use of your time. We go with you to visit the short lists. We help you, it's very important, 
help you decide which one is the best property for you because what's good for you is not good for somebody else because we don't sell them i don't care if the property is commercialized by agency a b or c it needs to be the best one in our opinion for you and you need to like it and we run appraisals we negotiate prices etc very uh, there's a lot of interaction we talk maybe not daily but it's a lot of it's it's one to one very personalized and the second option is and that's something new we, we've launched is this online mentoring program where during several weeks we have live sessions with myself and we pick one topic per session so one deep dive 90 minutes uh on it can be on what should your purchase contract look like and what should you certainly not allow to be in there an example of, of, of one session it's a model where we give you all our expertise in a digital way uh, but you apply it yourself we are not there our lawyers are not there uh, we, we could be but in, the basic model is that you do it on your own uh, it includes as well a live session just for you just you you and me uh, to explain your plans because i understand we do it in small groups but that you don't want to share your personal uh, situation in, in, in a group so that's it to make this work there is lawyers in the background there's architects in the background there's specialization behind it Nothing more about that. Requirements, because I said I would talk about requirements for the purchase, the purchase process. Requirements of Spanish law is, it, it, it's very simple. You need an NIE number, which you might have read about, a kind of a registration number uh, in Spain for each buyer. If you buy together with your partner, two NIE numbers. And you need a Spanish bank account. That's the only two requirements you really need as an international buyer to buy a property in Spain. Uh, bank account don't wait till the last minute to open that because you need it uh you need the money in the bank account 10 days let's say before you go to notary to be on the safe side so at the end of the process you need it. so when you make your first trip to spain open and you want to buy open a bank account already it takes a bit of time it's very administrative at most banks a lot of documents to sign but you need to you need to do it and you can't do it remotely NIE number, we can do it for you. We can get it fairly quickly. It has become more complex now. Uh, we can do it for you, or you can do it at the Spanish consulate or embassy in your home country. Um, if you don't want to live in Spain, it's, if, then you need an NIE number for non-residents. If you live here or you want to live here, you might uh, want, need to one for residents. Again, uh, you need to see it's case by case. One thing that many people don't do, and we always try to explain to our clients why this is so important. If you don't live here, put a power of attorney in place. It's very simple. We use standard powers of attorney that we, that, that can be very useful for, for a purchase transaction to avoid hiccups, to avoid delays or pausing the process. If you live in the US and suddenly, uh, let's say the date to, for, to go to notary to, comp to complete the purchase is the 22nd of June, and you say, yeah, it's okay, we will both travel. You need to travel both if you buy together with your partner. You travel both here. Something happens last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, for work reasons or you're ill, whatever it might be, and you can't travel both. You have a major problem. Uh, technically speaking, it's bre breach of contract. You might lose your 10%. If there is force majeure, it can be discussed. If the seller is uh, a very nice person, they might want to adjust the date. But if they're strict, you have a problem. So. Put these powers in place your standards templates for that uh, makes life a lot easier it doesn't mean you need to use these powers it, it only gives you the option and that's that's very powerful that's the requirements now how does the process look like the process itself is not very different from what you might have in other countries there's three big milestones once you like a property you submit an offer and um, we do that uh we, we we have first we try to test with the selling party uh, where we think we can land the, the 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 final price therefore what offer we need to we need to submit what price level we need to we need to submit uh, it needs to be submitted formally in most cases and that's also our recommendation with that offer you pay normally up to one percent of the purchase price it can be a bit more if it's a new development or it's a, it's an off-plan project that can be a bit more it shouldn't be too much more one percent when you make an offer and, and when it's accepted, you have a reservation contract that is signed. That is with 1% paid. So let's say you buy a property of half a million, you've paid 5,000 euros, signed reservation letter by yourself and by the selling party and probably by the, by the agent. Good. But you don't have information yet on the property because it's not transparent. It's not available. So it's a very weak level of commitment. 
Uh, if another buyer comes along, he wants to pay more, the agency might say, here's your money back and they sell to someone else. The due diligence happens year after a reservation contract and before you sign your ARAS, your earnest money contract. Huh? And, and then you, you will have paid in total 10%, you pay another 9% at that point in time. That is, you, we need to be able to pick all the boxes from a legal point of view, from a technical point of view, from a financial point of view, before we allow you to sign such a contract. That is the type of contract where most people make mistakes. 99% of the cases, the seller, the agency will give a draft contract to the seller, to the buyer, sorry, and say, look, that's the contract, they, they fill in your data. It's the worst thing you can do. That contract is not protecting you. It's not anticipating anything that can happen between now and going to the notary. Uh, don't, don't do that. You need to know what clauses to have in there, how to protect yourself, huh? who's responsible for what, et cetera. And then the final step is the, the notary. Timing in Spain, if you don't need a mortgage, you can go, you can go, uh, you can very, you can, you can go very quickly. Uh, in a few weeks, you can have a, a deal completed. Most people need to open a bank account, need to transfer the funds or sell some, some stock, whatever. Um, standards time from, if you need financing, for instance, is you have a deal on the property reservation agreements, one to maximum two weeks between that and an earnest money contract. So between paying 1% and having 10% paid. And then between earnest money and notary, it depends. If you have the cash available, it can be literally the next week, the week after. If you need a mortgage, you need to add one and a half to two and a half months to that to that timeline. All right, that's the uh, process. I mentioned, I, I, I'm, I'm cautious I'm going fast through this, but this, I also want to give you time for questions. Golden visa in brief, uh, that's for non-EU citizens. It's the red carpet entry tickets into Europe. Uh, uh, we don't know for how long this will continue to exist. There is some pressure to, uh, make, to, to, to maybe not cancel, but to make it more restrictive. Today, if you buy a property and you have it of at least half a million euros, and that half a million you put in is debt free, meaning not uh, borrowed, not, no mortgage on that, on that amount, you can get residency and work permit for you and potentially for your family, access to private health insurance, the best international schools, you to travel across Schengen uh, in, in Europe without border controls, no 90 day restriction. It's a luxury visa scheme. Right? And only one requirement, the 500K debt free. You don't have to reside here. You can reside as much as you want. You don't have to reside. Um, specialist lawyers we, we need for that. Again, uh, you need to, we need to plan it in from the very beginning. If you want golden visa, uh, let's have the conversation about uh, with, with, with the lawyers and you early on, even before you buy a property, because the way you structure the purchase impacts uh, the way if you can get or not a golden visa. Right? You have seen people who buy a property and then they don't get a golden visa and they could have got it easily just by structuring it it's differently. Okay? That's the golden visa part. And then location, not too much on this topic, but uh, still, Quite some people in, in, in when, when you registered mentioned what I said before. Eh? I'm not sure between Mallorca or uh, uh, or Costa Brava or, or Costa del Sol. So the, the the way to think about location is uh, you, you've got to go on site. You've got to discover these places. Uh, print a map, uh, not a Google map. Print it the map of the area, take color markers, red, amber, green, what you like, what you don't like, because even on a small piece of coast, villages are so different, can be very beautiful to very ugly. Uh, the social mix of people living there is very different. Uh, location impacts price a lot, uh, but the type of property you want to buy also impacts price a lot. And in some locations, you find a certain type of property. For instance, uh, some places on the coast have like uh, high buildings from the uh, 80s, 70s, 80s, or 90s. Not particularly beautiful. Other villages are more uh, more historic, uh, more, more better, better uh, conserved. It's different. In Barcelona as well, you have the old classical Barcelona Art Nouveau buildings in the, in the Champla area, lovely. Uh, but if you go more uptown, San Gervasi, uh, you, you have less of these. The buildings are, are maybe newer. But you have a parking and the old building's not. So property features, location, price, you need to balance them. What can you buy where for one money? And not, that, not, not every combination exists. Um, so the, the very first thing 
we always do, and you should do, I think, when you buy a property in Spain, is first talk to your bank, understand the financials well. Surprisingly enough, people, when they, when they buy a property at home, the first thing they do is go to their bank advisor and ask what is possible, what can I, what can I do? In Spain, people don't do it. They find a property, or international buyers, they often find a property, and then often sign a reservation contract and then talk to their bank. And then they lose the money they paid in reservation because the bank says, ah, I can't give you a mortgage. Be, be mindful of this. Location impact price. This is an example of Barcelona. Um, for those of you, of you who know the city, gray in the center is, is the most expensive uh, prices uh, there. And then it goes to, to, to red and then the yellow and then the blue and the green. You see how prices go from, from low to high. If you only move sometimes a few streets in 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 the city, that's and you've got to have that local that local market knowledge and benchmark properly, because you uh, if you want to live close to the French school in 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 Barcelona, you pay a lot more and the apartment might be a lot smaller than if you say okay instead of being ten minute walking distance, I'm ten minute on a bus ride, and you have a much larger property and it's cheaper. So that's things we need to work out in the very beginning. Financials first, and then a proper workshop, proper discussion with examples on the screen or, or in the meeting room with a, with a map and color markers, with your lifestyle examples, etc. So we can make sure it's viable, it's realistic what you want to do. That's what I wanted to share with you. Um, so what can you do now next before I open up for, for questions? Uh, there's two things. Uh, you can not do much or nothing, and then the result is predictable. Huh? So then you know that you will go into a certain uh, purchase transaction with the knowledge you have today, and maybe you know enough, that's fine. But we offer you something special. Because you're on the webinar and you want to do this, you send if you send us your buyer wish list you can do it on our website or with this QR code, we'll send it later. Describe how your dream property looks like, where it is. We will give you our opinion. We'll tell you if you think it's realistic. We'll tell you what you think you should watch out for. And if you think it makes sense, um, we will offer you a 30-minute free consultation as well. Um, stations are normally, are normally paid for, or, or longer workshops are also paid for. Like a value is like around 100 euros. We, we give it to you for free. If you, if you explain us what you want, if you're serious about it, of course, we, do, we only do this if you are serious about taking a buy decision. Uh, you, you get our independent opinion tips to your specific situation for free without any commitment. If you say, no, I'm ready to start my buying journey. I'm already looking at properties maybe. There's two options. The uh, online mentoring pack at a discounted price, as I said before, or just contact us and let, we can have a conversation how we can help you one-to-one, -one, which is a model we, we, we most use, the one-to-one the, the -one advisory. Um, that we can, of course, add at the most value uh, in, in, in the search, in the off-market opportunities or the negotiation, the contracts, the lawyers, etc. But you're never alone in, in that model. Mm -hmm. So feel free to uh, take these actions. Only you can decide this. Um, but somebody told me recently, and I, I put a quote here, he said, just imagine, we do all so many things in a day and we do some things very well and other things may, may be more average in, in our lives. Uh, but just imagine that you dedicate all of your time the thing that you are best at, what would happen? Yeah? So what we do, what I do every day is only help people buy property. Yeah? That, that's our job, that's what our team does. So you can tap into that knowledge if you're interested. Uh, let's open this up for, we have seen this before, I don't need to repeat this. I'm gonna look at the chat, right? There's a chat function here, you can write your questions there. Um, I'm literally going <clears> to <throat> go through it from top to bottom, but you can also open up your microphone if you want to and ask your question directly. But maybe first write it briefly here and then we can open the mic if required. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, first, Magia, quick, quick uh, to say thank you for this webinar. Uh, person needs to leave earlier. We will send you the recording. Uh, Somebody else had to leave. So, uh, questions here. Uh, easy, easy. Uh, can can I obtain an NIE without living if I'm EU citizen? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, you, you can get an NIE number 
if you want to buy a property here or if you buy it in the process of buying a property here, uh, you don't need to live here. So example, uh, you want to buy a property just to rent out. And maybe in the future you want to live here, but not now. So you need an ID number, you need a bank account, you can perfectly get it. It doesn't matter in this case if you're an EU citizen or a non-EU citizen. You can get it on the NIE number for you. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, Maggie or Maggie, can, can Spanish bank account be opened online from the US? No. Uh, the, the, there's a requirement in Spain that you need to be at least once in person in front of someone from the bank to open a bank account. That's There's a, a legislation in, in Europe. It's, it's not just Spain, it's in Europe. It's anti-money laundering and anti-terrorism financing. And that's the reason why you have to be one time in Spain. There were some exceptions in the past. Uh, sometimes we test with the banks. Sometimes the banks can be a little bit creative to, let's say, prepare everything in advance. But it's only because we have very good relationships with senior decision makers in, in, in many different banks in Spain. So they can uh, prepare everything remotely with you, uh, do Zoom calls, etc. But you still have to sign in person. Uh, so you can't send funds yet. They can't uh, liberate funds in your bank account. But some things can be uh, done, done remotely. The best thing is, uh, Miguel, to one, once you're here, the next time in Spain, open a bank account already. I'm a dual citizen, US and Spanish citizen. Uh, how does it affect things? If you're Spanish, if you're Spanish passport, then you don't need an IE number and uh, you, you probably have your uh, DNI number or, or, or something similar. Um, so then you don't need to use your, your US passport, uh, Karen. Then it's, it's better and easier to use your Spanish one. Thank you. Um, I don't have an NIE number yet but um, I do have the Spanish passport. Thank yeah, but then, then, then you do not need an NIE number. If you have the Spanish passport, it's okay with the passport. They told me that I do need it. I mean, maybe not your situation, but for, for most situations, I'm if you And you don't have a DNI number, it's a different type of number. Oh, oh, that's what I'm confusing. Right. Yeah. I don't have that. I don't have Okay, either. okay, okay. Then, then they might require require you to have an NIE number if it if okay. it's just a passport. Um we can we can check with the with good contacts with the uh foreigners office uh, this can be this can be checked. Are there any advantages over, over would you say there are any advantages being a citizen already in terms of buying property versus no the the the, the difference comes into play only when you want to take a mortgage on a property the banks will differentiate between uh, residents and non-residents uh, to determine mainly the, the the amount or the percentage of loan to value so if the property is worth let's say 100 uh, a resident can typically get 80 percent financing on that property a non-resident rather 60 to 70 percent financing as a maximum so you need a bit more own funds as a non-resident it's okay. not nationality, it's residency that, that the banks look at. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, is it true that, there's a question, is it true the Spanish bank will not give mortgages for people over 60 years old? Um, banks, they don't want risks. They want to make sure that you can pay back a mortgage. What they do is they, they look at uh, until when can you generate income, realistically speaking. Uh, I've seen mortgages for people over 60, but it's mortgages of maybe a duration of five years or seven years. And so it's, 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 it's obviously, it's not the same when you're 25 or when you're, when you're 60. It's not, it's not excluded, but it's, it's, it's going to be more difficult. Mm -hmm. And you need to prove income. And some people at 60, maybe they are retired already. So, uh, Gerard, in regard to golden visa, does the one needing the golden visa needs to be the buyer or can it be a Belgian buyer with a golden visa for his non-EU mother? No. The, 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 so the person who wants golden visa needs to be on the, uh, on the, on the purchase deed, needs to own the property. Uh, and then if, you, if that person has a partner, this is married, for instance, or have kids who depend on him, those people can also again get a golden visa. The mistake that many people make is, so imagine you're a couple 
you have you bought a property of 600,000 euros, you put 500 debt free into that property, and you buy the property on both your name because you say it's both our money. Uh, if, if something happens to one of us, I want to make sure, uh, and so on. They buy the property on both their name, and then they don't get golden visa because the authorities say no, because you're only buying uh, that free 250k each. So 500 divided by two, you don't qualify. So you got to buy it on one person's name, except if you buy for more than a million, on one person's name, and then see what the relationship is with, with the other person. Uh, do you assist potential buyers that are on a lower budget than golden visa? What is your range? Yeah, of course. Uh, our, our our clients start. We don't have a hard limit. It, it needs to be feasible, and, and depends as, as well where it is in Spain. But we have quite some first-time young buyers that start to look at properties in the range of two hundred thousand euros. Uh, so it's it's not it's not it's not only golden visa. There's a, a larger segment. In the let's say 400 to 650k, uh, there's a lot of buyers there, um, and then there's there's obviously people who have uh, unlimited budgets, um, and but around 200k is kind of the starting point, which is as well what what you can afford to to, to buy a 200k property with a mortgage. What many young people want, you need around 45, 50 thousand euro of savings to be able to get a mortgage uh, and, and cover the costs, etc. Yeah, ask many questions. That's good. Um, we are top on the, at the top of the hour, but I, I just continue going. Um, okay, yeah, I, I'll repeat the question here. Um, I understand that if my spouse and I, sorry, I understand that if my spouse spouse and I are to purchase a property in Spain with the hopes of obtaining gold or visa, we will both need to apply for the NIE number. Uh, that's correct. But I'm wondering if we are able to collect rent from a property while on a golden visa. Yes, you can. With a golden visa, you can do with a property whatever you want. You can leave it empty, you can live there, you can rent it out. But but you need to keep it. You know, otherwise, you lose your golden visa rights. If you plan to purchase a property within the next year, rent it out, and hopefully move full time to spare in the next few years. Yes, that, that's fine, Jennifer. No problem. The only thing to take into account is there is some, and there's nothing official, but in our network, we obviously hear a lot of things. Uh, there is some rumors that they might restrict the golden visa requirements um, after summer. September. Again, it's not official, um, but if the current legislation doesn't change, you can do what you describe here. So I have a, thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Um, a, one question that I have for you is, could we possibly, um, for the 500,000 that we, we need, can we split into two properties? Can we buy two properties or does it have to be a purchase of one full property for 500,000? No, as, as it's working so far, you can have you can have more than one property. Okay, perfect. Muchas yeah. gracias. Yeah, but it needs to be debt-free and it needs to add up to, to 500,000. And again, if you buy together with, uh, with somebody else, uh, you should buy on one person's name only, otherwise it doesn't work. Got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Robert says, thank you. Uh, as always, excellent. Great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Kyle, uh, what would roughly be the homeowner condo association fee uh, and annual property tax, say, for a 400k apartment in Barcelona? Very good question, Kyle. Um, for those of you who are from the US, uh, homeowner uh, fees or, or contributions are very low, very low in Spain compared to what is in the US. Um, for um, for 400k apartment in Barcelona, maybe you pay, uh, depends how good the building is, etc. how much work is, is, is needed. Maybe 80 euro per month, 100 euro per month maybe, so 300 is, is paid per quarter typically. Uh, no, so, so, sorry, it can be by, by month or per quarter, um, simply by month. Um, it's 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 uh, a few hundred euros per quarter. That's what you should have. If it's really nice or larger properties, you might have uh, some very nice properties, 120, 150 euros per month, but that's that's in the high end range and that's not standard. So it's fairly low. Um, Christopher, uh, your question. If I get the payment of my life insurance next year, would you rather recommend to buy now with the help of a bank, uh, with your help or start the collaboration next year as it's... Uh, as it's six months duration, if I'm not misleading. Um, 
I think it, it depends a bit on how you want to proceed. The, I think, Christoph, we had, we had a conversation. We, you, we, yes, we, 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 we discussed, uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> we discussed like a new, uh, collaboration of, of six months in the context of our discussion at that point in time. If now you say, look, my, my timeline looks different, uh, let's re let, let's relook at that discussion. From our point of view, I'm a very practical person. It needs to make sense. It needs to add value to you. And I need to feel comfortable that we can deliver good service. So if, if we start now with what I said, the, the financial part and the planning and, and this workshopping, what can you buy where and what is the target property, what is good, what is not good, which areas and so on. And then you say, and then I wait because I need to, I want to collect that money uh, first from, from the insurance. It's no problem for us. We can, we can pause okay. that collaboration and then reactivate it. Right? Some people do that for different reasons. Right? Some people say, look, I need to travel for one month to the US. So and then, then we're also waiting. So very practical from that point of view. Uh, if you take a mortgage, if you were to buy now with, with, a, with a certain mortgage, uh, what we need to make sure is that in the mortgage negotiations, we get an offer from the bank and not, not all banks offer that, where you can pay back your mortgage quickly without, uh, without additional costs or with very low additional costs. Because if you amortize early, so if you imagine you have like a 100K mortgage and you pay 100K back next year in one shot, uh, some banks will charge you a fee for that. You need to find the bank with the lowest fee. For it. The fees are low in general, right? It's, it's probably a few hundred euros, but it, it, that, may, that might make sense to, to look at. So rough things, and sorry for not maybe being clear. It was more how you see the market dynamics, whether you see that the market oh, okay. is now uh, so, now the ready time to buy, or you say, Christopher, be relaxed okay. in eight yeah, one twenty four. Okay. It will no, be that, that, sorry, that's a very good question. So the the overall market in Spain. So what you will read in Idealista and in, and in La Vanguardia and so on in Spain, and maybe some international magazines and newspapers, uh, there will be this year less transactions and last year was a peak and eh? 647 000 transactions i think it's it's, it's a historic peak uh, it will be less this year i think because you higher interest rate but it's less in general i think the segment of international buyers is, is totally different and a lot of people have a lot of cash a lot of people have good jobs and incomes therefore qualify for good mortgages uh and um and they will be able to to make good deals to get good deals Meaning, find good properties, negotiate harder, get better deals, pay less for the property. Uh, th th there is different drivers here. Right? So I think the market is not going to go up this year in terms of prices. Uh, I don't think that the international segment will drop, or I don't think there's any significant drops in, in the market. Uh, good. In interest rates will probably go up a little bit more. Let let's see how inflation reacts, but... European Central Bank is, is, is pretty uh, pretty firm in, in, in that, so they might go up a bit more. But again, that's not going to be the message. The, the big increase happened already. Um, and then ne next year, we don't have a crystal ball, but uh, I think me medium term, the market is, because this was Barcelona for you, I think, no? The, the, the yes, market Barcelona, is, Elbon. Yeah. Barcelona. So Barcelona is, is a very dynamic market with a, a lack of supply of properties these days. Uh, and so, and demand is, is strong. So, and I don't expect big changes there. Okay, I drop you an email and then we yeah, well, let's have a, let's have a conversation. How we move it forward from here. So, Thanks a million. No, you're welcome. Uh, Yusef, um, when in the process should you talk to the bank in case you need a mortgage? Do you need to get a mortgage approved before paying any deposits? Um, talk to the bank as early as you can. In my opinion, you, our clients, I want to see pre-approvals from banks before they uh, submit an offer for a property or at least before they sign that earnest money contract when they pay 10%. That's something that I that I prefer. Uh, oops, I changed my screen here. Do you still, do you still see me? Yes. Um, so before you, you sign an ARAS contract, you should have least that approval because otherwise you put your money, your 10% at risk. Because the, the banks in the past, they had they made, they made you a binding offer, was valid for a month, a month and a half, sometimes. Today, the binding offers from a bank, so the offers from a bank, even not binding offers, are valid for a week, maximum 10 days, because the banks, they don't know what's going to happen in the markets. So 
get these approvals um, in written. So, is okay now the screen? You see me? Okay, so we continue. Um, so you said that you should do this as, as soon as possible, right? Before searching properties, actually, that, that's the best thing for you. Um, how does the way you structure the purchase impact the golden visa? That's what I mentioned before, Yusef. Uh, so if you're two people, it needs to be on one person's name if you buy below the 1 million. Otherwise, if you split it in two, the purchase amount, you end up below 500,000 and you don't qualify for golden visa. That is why it's so important. Uh, we need them to see with our clients how we structure it. I guess you want to give guarantees to your partner in principle, so maybe we set up a Spanish will or some other type of agreement to make sure that both parties are protected in case something would happen. Veronica, uh, your question. I used to love, yeah. I'm an EU citizen living in Spain. I want to buy a property, but I'm scared. Uh, but I'm scared is not the right moment given the market situation and the interest rate. I will apply for a mortgage. Given your experience, what's your advice there? Uh, should I wait a bit more? It's what I discussed uh, just just before uh, Veronica. What I think about what the prices will do. The there's easy calculation. Drop, drop us an email. I will send you an example because I, I made a simulation in in Excel. Uh, what if the property price were to drop, let's say by five percent? Hmm? Could could happen, but it's it, it, it's not a big number. But what if the interest rate goes up by another dot five percent? How does that change your picture, and how does that impact your decision? If you drop us an email, we can we can take a look at it. Thank you. Will do. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, uh, Christopher, again, uh, you recommended to open the bank account as I'm now in Barcelona. I plan to go to BBVA. Already got NIE and Spanish cell phone number. Uh, I mean, it's not a question. It's it's a, it's a statement. I think so. That's that's a right no, thing. Sorry, it was more like whether there's other banks you recommend or do you say BBVA to you <laughs> ask. I, I have to upon, uh, I have to um, um, I have to disappoint all of you. There is no single good bank, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> they're they're, they're all problem makers. They're all slow. They're all over overload with work. They're all non-responsive, uh, and we have great connections there. It's so it's a pain you have to go through as a buyer, but it's a one-time thing. And in my opinion, you just need to get uh, the best mortgage. If you open a bank account, um, BBVA in the last year, this year, they were pushing back on international buyers. So if they want to do it, it's fine. But as I saw them pushing back on international buyers in the last months. Um, they're also not, you, you, you will need, it's hard to find someone who speaks English at BBVA. But no, I'm um, low, I'm low Espanol, so. Well, okay, so that, then that should be fine. Um, if if you take a mortgage later, or if anybody takes, you have a bank account, you take a mortgage, you can still open a close the bank account, open another bank account somewhere else. It's okay. It's, so it's, a, it's, it's a bit of time, but if that helps you save money on your mortgage or on the payments, it makes sense. Thank. Yeah. Uh, Pavi, now you're also still on. In relation to one, in relation to one of the polls about the lawyer's role, there are. There, there may be some confusion in, amongst people, I think. I heard from past buyers that there are law, that they're a lawyer, that they hired a lawyer from a bank, I think you want to say, in case you're using mortgage. Who does some legal checks? Uh, can you explain to what extent this lawyer does a due diligence check anything? Uh, that there is a lawyer I wanted to write. That there is a lawyer hired from the bank. Sorry, just to clarify. So, um, no, I think you got wrong information there. The, the bank is not providing lawyers. The bank is, 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 is very selfish, just trying to get your signatures and giving you the mortgage. That's their business. They're not, they're not doing any legal checks. What is true is that if you take a mortgage, the bank, they have like a, a risk department. That risk department will look at the property documentation. So... If there were um, certain charges and encumbrances on the property, for instance, yeah, the bank will spot it. Uh, it might be a problem or not for them. But the problem is the bank will spot it because the bank, to, to make a, a serious mortgage offer, they need to know what property you buy. So you need to sign a contract already 
and then ask the bank for their best offer. And then they look at the documentation. So it's too late then. If you sign something and, and there's a preferential right of purchase and you've paid 40,000 euro as a down payment, uh, you're at risk. Because the bank will probably say, we don't finance this and uh, end of the story. And good luck in getting your money back. So don't trust on, on the bank to, to, to do your due diligence because they, they do not. Thanks, Ralph. Very clear. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, Okay, there's a few people saying thank you. Then I see here, uh, I have to go, but thank you guys. This is very helpful. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Pauline, uh, does Inspire provide advice on local taxes as something to take into account before buying a property? Uh, tax is very specific. Yes, we do. We do that. We don't do in-house tax advice, and that's on purpose. Because I said to you in the very beginning, I, I believe in specialization, in deep expertise, and, and tax is very, very specific. It depends not only, it's not just Spanish, it's also, there's international dimension to this, there's double taxation agreements, it's, it's, it's complicated and very specific to each of your, your situations. So yeah, we can put you in touch with, um, with our tax advisors, we do this for many of our customers, and to do any simulations. Typical examples of tax advice people want before they decide to buy a property. If I rent it out, how much do I need to pay in, in taxes for that? Can I deduct costs if I rent it out? Or just things like the buying costs and these things we advise on that. Eh? So that is standard, that is directly linked to the purchase process. You have 10% buying costs by default, 2,000, 3,000 euros for note, we for rent registry. These costs, I need, we have the whole modeled out in our Excel files. Uh, but if you want other advice, typical other tax advice, people get a donation from their family, from their parents or so. How does that need to be documented? How is that taxed in Spain if you're from the UK, for instance, from the US? So we can put you in touch and can be managed. Uh, Yusuf, another question here. What documents would be needed when making a large transfer from abroad to a Spanish bank account? Um, not too many documents, but you need to ask your uh your bank in spain what they will require i also recommend that you inform your bank in spain that you will be making such a large transfer because they could block it blocking means you send the money it's gone from your accounts uh, abroad and you you see it but you can't access it in your spanish bank account as again the uh, anti-money laundering and, and terrorism financing legislation in europe the basic thing you need to do to justify to prove is the origin of the funds you said um so i'm a big fan of documenting every single step in your process if the money is today um in stocks on the stock market you sell the stocks you get the stocks into your i don't know into your us bank account for instance document that you have the stock document that you do the transfer to your bank account you have an extract of a, a balance uh, of your bank account in the us or whichever country it is you make the transfer, you have documents every step. So you can prove the origin of the funds. Uh, that, that is important. And second point, inform your bank here. Ask if they will need something else. Because otherwise, if you don't inform your bank manager, somebody at the back office in the bank will look at it and they might just block it without knowing what it is. And it can cause some stress if you need the money the week afterwards to go to a notary and you see the big amount is blocked and you can't access it. Huh? Uh, um, it, it's it's uh, don't don't go for that heart attack scenario. Prepare it and speak to your banks. Uh, Hizzy, or oh, Hizzy, um, are you still on? Yes. Uh, question about location, please. Any word about buying out of popular spots? Example: I used to stay vacation in a small village, uh, forty minutes north from Barcelona. Totally local and no foreigners, and so much cheaper. Any considerations other than just cultural differences? Uh, or it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very personal lo location, very personal. Uh, location impacts price. Prices massively drop if you go north from Barcelona and if you don't go to the very coastline, uh, to the coast, to the Valesma or Costa Brava, mm -hmm. prices go uh, significantly down. You can buy uh, much more square meters. You can buy, buy a lot better uh, air quality, less noise, less pollution, and these kind of things. Uh, connectivity will impact the price. If the village is very well connected, price will be higher. Uh, we see a trend since uh, April or May 2020 of people moving away from the city center if they like this type of environment, if they can work remotely. Because with remote working, 
such villages become a real option. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, what we often do is if, if people have doubts, so yeah, but I don't know really, I don't know the area well, and we have a lot of clients from, 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 from Germany and and from the Nordics in, in, in that segment at the moment here with us, uh, we do a mm -hmm. proper workshop and we, we think through the, because we know these locations well, uh, think about pros and cons and what do you need uh, for work, for your family to be happy, to, I don't know, uh, and, and the, is it a good match, yes or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But it's uh, it's certainly uh, something to consider. Yeah. Um, Maggie, another question. Since you advise pre-approval from a bank, if a buyer works one-to-one -one with Inspire, do you assist then the broker referrals? Uh, yes. So when, when when you work with us in in, in the in, in the one-to-one -one model, uh, we help you. We, we get you in touch with banks or with broker or brokers. Um, I, I will build together with you the scenarios that I think we should ask the banks. So the scenarios are different for everyone. Um, because I want to see options. Uh, we need to, 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 to know what is possible uh, before we move on to go, to go and see certain properties. Once you like a property, you want to make an offer, I need to be really sure and confident that I know which bank will, uh, will give, you the, give you the money under what conditions. Uh, because otherwise there's risk involved. And if we know that, that financing is secured or pre-approved, it's never secured at that stage, it's pre-approved, we can negotiate way harder, and I know that timelines will be shorter, etc. So, yeah, you help her, you help you with that. Once the bank then comes back to you with a mortgage proposals, uh, we will look at them together, and we will tell you which questions to clarify, uh, what, what our opinion is, and we just have conversations about what you think is better: fixed or variable interest rates, or mixed models, or thirty or twenty-five duration or bank A or bank B, or what about a life insurance they want me to commit to, which is 350 euros per year. Uh, is that high or is it not high? And, and, and one bank wants me to make an alarm system, but I don't want an alarm system. All these kind of things that, because uh, there's a lot of small texts, uh, they call it vinculaciones uh, that banks have. So if you buy another product for them, you get a better interest rate. And sometimes these additional, offer, additional products make sense. Sometimes they're abusive. So that's, we, we look at that together. Uh, another question, Pauline, or Paula, Pauline. Uh, you mentioned that from 5,000 euros, you can provide one-to-one -one advice. I have the following question. My apologies, I have already covered these ones. Uh, does your fee change based on the cost of the property? And is there a flat fee for your service or does it vary, vary based on the length of the process? Uh, are there any additional fees which are, uh, that we should be aware of? Uh, so you, you, you're right. So our Entry base, base model starts around 5,000 euros. That's a, the, the lightest version we have. Uh, and then depending on, on how many properties we need. So there's models where you can identify properties and, and, and say, look, Inspire, I, have, I found three, four, five, seven, whatever uh, properties here. What do you think about them? Can you come and visit some of them with me? Uh, I want to make sure I take the right decision and uh, you can do that. But other people say, uh, we don't live in, in, in Barcelona or in Spain. Uh, can you pre-screen the market? We, we, I'll give an example. Uh, we've got clients, they, uh, they came over last week from the US. It's uh, a couple, they, they want to want a golden visa and then and, and, uh, to retire here or spend some time here. We started two months ago. We had this workshop. Um, we, we, we initiated the golden visa process to make sure everything is aligned. We pre-screened the market. We went to visit properties while they were still in the US. Um, we made a short list. We have a WhatsApp group. We share all the properties we've seen and which with the pros and cons from our point of view, which, which ones we think they should visit together with us. They came over last week uh, for six or seven days. We did several, several visits together with them. Properties we had seen already. And then we help them decide. We have a debriefing, a coffee, glass of wine at the end of the day to reflect what is best for you. Uh, so that's another level of service that is that is more expensive. Uh, uh, the same point here. If you drop us your wish list um, in the email you, we sent you afterwards, we will send you the, 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 the link you can use. Send us your buyer wish list. Uh, we look at it and we can have a one-to-one -one conversation to, to see what is required. Uh. 
it's 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 not the same if if, if you say I, I have a property already can help me buy this and if you were to say i need to start I, I didn't speak to banks yet i didn't visit any properties yet uh and 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 i'm not in in the city for instance um the the fee will always be agreed before we start working for it in a very transparent way in function of the scope and the complexity we define what the uh, what the fees would be for the for the service um, additional fees or charges that you should be aware of you have 10 percent purchase tax and i talked for barcelona catalonia it can be slightly more or less in, in other parts of spain uh, notary fees and land registry fees two to three thousand euro as a lump sum so 10 percent plus two and a half thousand euros let's say is what you should budget with if you want the power of attorney uh, i think it's it's i think it's 80 euros at the notary or 100 euros uh, it's small things if you need an nie number you want you want us to manage it for you it's a small extra cost but these are not game changers it's it's uh, uh, small things uh, yeah i think that's the, the answer to that question stefani uh i have a spanish iban so bank account it's an online bank uh, m26 but don't have an account at the spanish bank is that also valid no it's very difficult to do things with m26 and, and m26 is great for just basic online banking it's not they, they don't give mortgages uh at least as far as i'm aware and you you will need another bank account to make the process uh work if you want to take in a mortgage because when you go to a notary when you make your final 90 percent payment that money has to come from a spanish bank account all the other payments the reservation payment of one percent the arras payment earnest money of nine percent you can pay that from any bank account in the world into the spanish bank account where it should go to that's no problem but the final 90 percent payment and that's in order to, to, to give guarantees that the money is there, bank guarantees, the money needs to come from a Spanish bank account. Um, so N26, Stephanie, I'm afraid, will not work. Uh, yeah, I see we've pasted, pasted the link here to the wish list link. Maybe another question. Barcelona uh, area seems to be your focus. To what extent is Inspire able to assist with expertise in other areas of Spain? Uh, some more than others. I, I don't know where you want to buy Mega. We work, <clears throat> we are, our office is in Barcelona. We work a lot in Barcelona, of course. We work a lot on the Costa Brava, which is a coast, let's say, up to two hours drive north from Barcelona. We work a lot in the area south from Barcelona uh, up to, say, Tarragona. And we can cover Valencia, we can cover Alicante. We've done uh, purchases recently in Murcia in the area. So, depending on, on where it is, we have uh, people there that are trained on our methodology. And, uh, and people, it means it's legal, it's legal expertise, people who can be at the notary with you, it's technical expertise for property inspections, they follow our methodology, and, and, and they work with us as, as one team. Let us know, drop us your wish list, and I, I will see if we can, if we can cover it. Wow, uh, half an hour of questions, or a bit more even. There's still quite some of you on. If somebody wants to ask more questions, just open up your microphone, open your microphone. Feel free to ask them. This is this is free. Uh, <laughs> take uh, uh, take profit of it, I would say. If not, we will. We'll, Just uh, we'll... maybe a quick question, Raf. This is Hezi here. Is there any um, um, concern with uh, properties that are not not uh, being uh, uh, someone not leaving them for a long time? from tax standpoint, like in the US, there are certain places that, uh, I mean, if you're not living full time, the municipality will charge you more more taxes or so no, on. Is there anything not, like that? Not, 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 not at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. th there is now a new, uh, in Spanish it's called Ley de la Vivienda. It's the first time in the history of Spain, in the, in the democratic history of Spain since 1975, that they have now uh, a housing law at national level it, it's new and it's in the news every single day. There's a lot of regulation that, that, that's coming in that, that, that wasn't there before. There's some intervention in the market, but um, so far it's a property is empty. There is no automatic taxation or so that, that would affect you. So. Thank you. Okay. More questions? So, so well, well, was, this, was, this, was this helpful? Is this, is this, uh, because I see a lot of people stay on, so um, you might be cooking in the meanwhile, I don't know, but 
is this is this is this helpful to get you my, my goal was to to give you more clarity and confidence in terms of what how the journey can look like in areas that you can control perfectly yourself and areas where you potentially might want to uh, look for expertise uh, to know how the market works in Spain so feel free to share your feedback huh? we're a small group I have a question, if I may, in regards to the uh, opening of the bank account um, here. I'm currently in Spain. I walked into a bank and um, they just gave me a list of about 25 different documents, including uh, all my pay stubs from the last four years. They needed stuff like that. I'm self-employed, so that won't fly. So is there a difference from bank to bank uh, in regards to opening a simple account or is there a possibility to hire a lawyer to open it on my behalf? Uh, the, our lawyers cannot open it on your behalf because you need to be once in person here. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard that, but I know that there's people here that bought houses uh, while they were still in South Africa or wherever they came from and they just gave a uh, power of attorney to their lawyer and I believe it was done that way but just I would like a confirmation from you. I, I, I would be surprised if the lawyer could open a bank account because uh, okay. it, 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 it doesn't work normally but I said as well before right? there is I've seen some exceptions right, where the banks are flexible and I've seen cases where the bank where the bank had a branch in the city in the US where that person had uh, was living and they met somebody there it was complicated, but it could work, but it's not a standard way. If you're in Barcelona, do it here in person. It's going to be a lot easier. Uh, the banks will ask you a lot of documentation. All the banks ask at least for the same set of documentation. Uh, they will want to have an extract of your bank account, probably a balance, balance a statement or a bank account, probably a copy of your passport or ID cards. Um, they will need some, some, some documentation from, from your side, which, which is fine. Uh, if they ask income statements and so on, that's probably not strictly required. I would say but you need to check bank bank by bank. Yeah, uh, what, what they, which bank did you go to? Oh, uh, I think it was Caixa. Yeah. I'm down. I'm down by Alicante in between Alicante and Valencia. So uh, I just walked right. into the first bank that uh, they actually spoke English yeah. because my Spanish is not very good. But it's it's, but... it's <laughs> you you picked the. Uh, not the most flexible bank, uh, okay. to, to, to say it, <laughs> to say it in a in a polite way. No, they, they're they're a big Spanish national bank, a bit of dinosaurs. Uh, they typically don't have good mortgage rates. They are expensive, uh, except if you're a a big servant in Spain. Uh, so, but you can go to to other banks as well. Eh? You can go and just go to any other bank as well. I was trying to open a basic account. I don't need a mortgage. I was just like, I know that I need eventually if uh, once yeah. I decide to buy, but like without even telling them that I would be looking into mortgage, I wanted to plain. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, so they, yeah, Kasha will I'll do a bit different. somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Uh... So maybe maybe it's Christopher again. Just on the the yeah. story with the lawyer who's opening bank account. I'm in contact with the lawyer, and they offer that they route all the payments via their account. So it's not that they open account, but that uh, they okay. say if you have a German account, then they say we can route it. I and, and would not do it, but maybe the feedback graph you asked for. So I think yeah. I saw all your videos on YouTube and okay. on top <laughs> all the webinars. And I thought, okay, I'm at least an expert and I learned so much during this one and a half hour. So thanks a million. Uh, last question from my side. Are you aware, and I heard some rumors that there is a change in the legal or sorry, in this pay scheme of agencies, which is one reason why they are so prominent now. Or is this just uh, related no, it, it, to- It's, only, it's all, only, for, only, only for rentals, nothing to do with buying. Okay, that's just for the rentals. Okay, thanks. To, to your point, uh, yes, a, law, a lawyer can, okay, they can take payments, etc. But when you own a property, you will need a bank. You can do with IBAN I, I bank accounts in Europe and you can pay your utility, electricity, water, your internet and so on and, and the homeowner association fees. You can do that from abroad, uh, but it's often a problem to set it up. Uh, it should work, it's European legislation, but often then- you No, but it not works for gas, 
no, uh, no, movie it's, star, it's, all these things. Legally, super legally it should work. They, they should allow you to do that. And if you're a patient and you push and, uh, and you should spend it, we can try. But yeah, many times you will get somebody on the phone there and they say, no, it doesn't work with a, with a non-Spanish. So make a constitution with ES of Spain. And, uh, That's what I said. And, the people who are you are not able to open a bank account if you not have a cell phone in Spain or cell phone number from Spain. No, that's, that's not true. It, Oh, no, 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 yeah, no. no that at least the online version I looked at. That's what they told me. But you are more the expert. I will not definitely. Yeah, but that's no, no, what I experienced. That's why yeah. I ask for which bank you recommend to work yeah. with. Check as well with your lawyer if he is charging over fee to do that uh, to receive the money. Because right? the lawyer has a massive responsibility if he does that. Uh, so I would assume that he would uh, charge some fees for that. Uh, so. Uh, they I charge know. for everything. Uh, so I think you you need a bank account anyway. I would just say open one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, the question about the bank account was because um, I am kind of on a fence, and uh, I'm thinking if I you know see a property and I decide I like you have to move quickly, as uh, you have said many times. This yeah. is also not my first webinar yeah. with you. Um, it sometimes takes a long time to pull um, all these documentation that the bank required from all the institutions. So if, if it would be possible to do it via the lawyer's account to pay for, for the property via the lawyer's account, that would make it easier and faster, of course. Yeah, I won't, yeah, I won't keep other people from no. asking more questions. No. Thank you. You're welcome. More questions or any specific situations you, you want to, to, uh, to comment um, or get my opinion on? Yes, uh, Rafi, hi, thank you so much. Um, so my Who's question, speaking? my name is uh, Maria Elena. Okay. Hi, Maria Gill, this is hi, Gill. Hi, hi, hi. So my question is, uh, uh, does Inspire help then also with people who would like to rent out the property they buy do you assist with uh, finding property management companies and that whole area of it? Yeah, yeah, as well. Actually, a lot of our clients want to do that because if it's not a primary residence, not it's not a place to live full time, they say, look, we are here maybe three months a year. Huh? So in between, can we rent it out on a monthly basis? The answer is yes. Um, for, for any type of rentals above 32 days, you don't need a license, so you can we can do that without any problems. The amount is very high in Spain for that type of rentals as well. So yeah, we we help our clients to to uh, to to do that, and, and and if necessary, even to to decorate a property to make it ready for renting out, or to uh, to make pictures of it, to to find tenants, to propose new tenants, uh, to do the cleaning afterwards if required, etc. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, this is Irene again. I would have a question in regards to the rentals. Um, I have heard there is a very high tax on um, the property rentals. If you're a non-resident and you own a property here and uh, you get a tourist license, and I'm not talking about Airbnb, long-term rentals, um, everybody's saying it, that it doesn't really pay off because uh, the, the fees of the agencies are very high to maintain the rentals and um, <clears throat> plus the taxes. Do you, can you answer at least the, the tax thing? What is the ballpark um, figure in percentage? So I, I repeat that, we, we are not tax advisors and, and I don't want to give tax advice, but I can share my, I, I know I have the answer to your question. Huh? So, because it's a general question. Um, so as a, you said you're a non-EU resident? Um, I am EU, but non-Spanish. Uh, Okay. Non-resident so, in Spain. Okay. So for um, th there's different tax schemes, and so either you pay ninety percent tax if you're resident in Spain, uh, and, and it can go up to twenty four percent. So if you're from the US, for instance, yeah, uh, you will pay twenty four percent on the on the rental income. If you're non EU resident, you also cannot deduce the costs uh, that you need to make to to. Uh, 
to get a rental income. If you are a uh, resident in Spain, or if I'm not mistaken, if you're EU resident, you can deduce some costs that you need to make to, to obtain the rental income. So taxation, 19 to 24%, depending on your situation. And it can be on the, on the gross or on the net rental income, again, depending on the situation. Thank you very much. Appreciate you're it. Welcome. But again, uh, here to, to your point, yeah, so that there is a tax, but uh, Spain is, or at least Barcelona, has very high rental prices, one of the highest in Spain. Uh, so it, it's you need to do the numbers and see if it, if it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Depends as well why you want to buy. If you want to buy a property and it's your dream to, to be able to use that, okay, maybe you pay taxes when you rent it out. But you still achieved your dream to be a few months a year in, in Spain, uh, or maybe late, yeah. late, later later be there. So there is yeah. there's pros and cons of, of everything. Yeah, that's exactly my position. I am looking at staying here for like three months a year max, okay. and then renting yeah. out the rest, and eventually switching off the rental. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Hi, hey, Raf. Thanks a lot for the presentation. It's really informative. I just want to ask you a question about in regards to if, if I was to invest in a property and obviously mortgage rates are a bit better if you're looking to invest as a domicile investment, so to live in mm -hmm. initially. If after a few years I'm looking at moving that over to an investment property to rent out, do you know how easy that is in Spain? If I'm a, so I'm an EU, EU national, but I'm living in Spain. Uh, so just changing from uh, instead of living there, renting it out? Yeah, exactly. And you mean with respect to the mortgage rates? Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it's no impact. It doesn't matter. Okay, the bank, so it the, the bank doesn't care. Um, actually, uh, and, and I'm not recommending it, but what a lot of people do is, uh, even if they buy an investment property, they tell the bank they will live there themselves, so they get a, a higher percentage financing and they get <laughs> better better <laughs> interest rates. Okay, the, bank, the banks are also commercial people with targets. And so they go, okay, well, it doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> so. Okay, good to hear. Thanks, Raf. Welcome. More questions? We still have a good group of people in the meeting here. If you have further questions, because uh, some of you, you might just be busy with other things, drop us an email. Uh, and if you want to discuss a specific situation, I say, look, we, I, I am looking at properties uh, or I want to start looking at properties. Send us that wish list. The wish list is a very simple form. We ask you to, to, to describe in a structured way how the property looks like, which areas you have in mind, what budget you have in mind. If you talk to your bank already, yes or no. Uh, if you're resident or non-resident. Um, what I ask you to include in that wish list is at least one or ideally two or so examples of properties that attract your attention. So you just go to any website, I don't care, Idealista or Fotocasa or Quiero, whichever site, and you take, copy the link of one property or two properties. It helps a lot to visualize, to tangibilize what you have in mind. Yeah? Because a 500K property uh, in that part of that city, that doesn't exist. We need to tangibilize it. So that, that, that makes our conversation then a lot more uh, to the point and valuable for you. Okay, I think if no more questions, uh, a big thank you for all of you for, for joining. Uh, 45 minutes over time nearly, but it's with, with, with pleasure. Uh, I hope you found it valuable. If you, if you liked it, uh, I've never asked it, but it just, it come, just comes to mind. Feel free to drop us a little review on Google and say, oh, this is helpful. This is important for us. This helps us to grow as well. Um, and be in touch. Thanks for it. And hope you found it helpful. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.